Fantastic. So t- t- tell me a little bit about the album, man. Um, so I uh, just came out just came out this week, and um, uh, I'm real happy with it. Uh, like uh, like my last uh, several, it's got a fair amount of instrumental stuff on it, and then uh, a little bit more in the way of uh, vocal tunes on this one. And uh, uh, yeah, just just pretty stoked to be starting to get it out there. It's uh, a lot of the songs I've been playing live with my band here for the last year or so, so it's. Uh, uh, a little bit different in that regard. I, you know, I already had some of the tunes a little more worked out, but yeah, but yeah I'm, I'm real stoked about it. Now, you have a fantastic history in music. Talk to me a little bit about this for folks that have been kiting, kind of hiding under a rock for the last couple of years. <laughs> yeah, well, I, it probably wouldn't have to be that big of a rock, you know, to miss <laughs> me, but... Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I've, I've done, uh, this is actually my fifth uh, independent release uh, solo CD, and uh, uh, Heat Wave came out in 2017, and then this uh, album, you know, just came out this summer, so uh, uh, got a little bit more of a consistent feel between the two. I think the new one is a, is a nice uh, kind of step forward. And, um, yeah, I've been playing, uh, you know, around the Midwest, mostly the central Illinois, uh, downstate Illinois area for years and years. I teach guitar, and, uh, uh, you know, that's pretty much what I do. Now, you are a professional guitarist, composer, producer, all these things. What, what made you love the uh, guitar to get you so into it? Uh, you know, I first started playing piano, taking piano lessons when I was, you know, 11, 12, 13 years old, and uh, played saxophone for a year before I picked up the guitar, and before I played piano, I was always real uh, interested in the guitar. My uncle is a, is a great guitar player, so so it's really been something, uh, you know, that I, has been with me just about my whole life, and, and certainly my whole adult life, and basically all I've all I've been doing and uh, I you know I couldn't imagine not doing it I, you know I just couldn't even imagine that we have got a great guest with us today Lou, Lou DeBell joins us here in a broadcast now um so tell me a little bit about the music scene where, where, where you're from and uh, can kind of give us some details on this um, you know, right in this area, you know, probably the most notable band that's from here is REO Speedwagon, and in the, uh, oh, 70s and 80s, uh, especially, there was, uh, you know, a really active rock music scene in this area, and, um, there's still a pretty active music scene, although not so much on the, on the, you know, rock or hard rock side, a lot of country, a lot of, uh, you know, sort of acoustic artists, but, uh, uh, you know, I play, I play gigs with my band. I play a, a solo act that I do where I have some tracks or sequencing behind me that kind of comes off like a whole band, and that's pretty versatile, so I'm able to kind of play a lot of different, you know, sort of different size venues and, you know, restaurant bars or parties or whatever. So, uh, so I manage to keep real busy, but, uh, but there's not a lot of, you know, certainly not a lot of original hard rock in this area, that's for sure, at the moment. Now, what, 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 why do you think that is? Oh, you know, uh, I mean, certainly the, the, the country, the new, the new country sound, I mean, that's obviously a little bit more uh, of kind of what's popular, uh, I think, in a general sense. Um, and so, uh, uh you know, even for cover bands, there's a lot more country acts or new country, whatever you want to call it, uh, than there are bands, you know, doing, you know, straight ahead rock and roll. I mean, I do a lot of originals at all, at all my shows one way or the other. You know, if I play a, a short set and we do almost all original, that's different than if I do a, you know, a three set club show. But, but for the, for the covers that I do, you know, I do a pretty straight ahead, Hard rock kind of, you know, Montrose, Ted Nugent, Pat Travers, Skinner, ZZ Top, and so forth. You know, I don't, I don't really do a variety act or anything like that. And uh, you know, even even for covers, there's not a lot of, uh, 
there's not a lot of bands doing that. You know, you get your hair metal band, you know, tributes, and you get your, your new country, but, uh, uh, you know, I'm kind of old school, and, and I just kind of do my thing, and usually it goes over pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome so uh talk to me about the production process and putting this uh, new album together so uh the big difference or at least you know real one of the really big differences between this and heat wave was when i did heat wave i started that project and got as far as I could with it, and, and then I got hooked up with uh, Rolf Monks in Germany, who did the mixing and mastering, and he has uh, Empire Studios in Germany. They've recorded uh, the last two Michael Schenker albums. Uh, they've recorded all the drums at Rolf's studio. He's done, you know, records with Tony Martin from Black Sabbath, and just a lot of you know, really noted people, and he's got a really legit thing going. So I was fortunate to get hooked up with him through Karsten Schultz, who uh, is a vocalist from Germany, who uh, sang for me on the first album on, on Heat Wave. And, uh, but with that record, you know, I kind of did everything. Then I got hooked up with Rolf, and he sort of, you know, was able to uh, take what I had done in my studio and, and, you know, really make it sound, you know, polished and ready for release. Well, with with American Hard Rock, with the new one, I went into it even before I started the recording process, knowing that I was going to have Rolf do the final uh, remix and master. And uh, so that made the process a lot more streamlined and I had a better idea going in of, you know, what I really needed to do to give him the, uh, you know, the tracks in the best way and so forth. So, uh, uh, so that was, uh, that was a big difference right from the outset. And I started recording in, uh, about the end of March or late, late March. And, um, I set a deadline for myself of having it out by July 31st, and, uh, you know, I had to coordinate with Rolf, and I had to coordinate. Karsten sings one track on this album, and I have Mike LaPond, bass from uh, Symphony X and Ross the Boss Band. Uh, he did his two tracks in New Jersey, and... Uh, the guy that does the graphic arts for me, the layout, he's in, in New York. So I'm coordinating with all these different people and, and uh, you know, trying to stay on top of the process. And at, uh, at that time, right around the end of March, I also booked a local uh, live TV appearance for July 24th, which was last week. And in the back of my mind, I was thinking, well, maybe I'll have it done, you know, in time to, you know, to have it with me when I do the the TV appearance, and uh, so, uh, you know, I was kind of cracking the whip on every trying to get trying to get things wrapped up, and sure enough, an hour before I had to leave for the TV gig, the first box of CDs showed up, <laughs> so, so I, you know, took that four-month process and basically just nailed the deadline as tight as I possibly could, and, uh, and yeah, I'm real, real happy with it, Rolf did a great job, everybody that, uh, that guessed it on it did a great job. Uh, uh, my regular drummer with the Lou DiBello band, uh, Ron Phelps, played drums on six of the tunes, and then uh, Bobby Wiles that played drums on the Heat Wave album. He's on uh, three tunes, and uh, bass player from the Lou DiBello band is on on several tracks on the record. So, so it was a little bit more of a kind of a band effort. Uh, uh, in that sense, uh, as well. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm real, real happy with the way things have gone so far. Fantastic. We have got a great guest with us today. Lou DiBello joins us. Tell me about Driving Force. We're going to play that track here in a view. Uh, that's a, uh, uh, an instrumental, um, uh, you know, on, uh, on Heat Wave, I had a tune full throttle and I've had, uh, uh, some different, uh, different tunes, uh, that, that kind of maybe stand out as the, you know, the memorable instrumental on the, on the album or whatever. And I think, I think Driving Force is probably, probably kind of like that. Uh, it's a riff that I kind of 
had, you know, running around for a while, and I sort of did a little bit of a demo version of it at one point, and then when I started really working on it again, I was thinking, well, you know, have I, you know, have I really, you know, done this song all the way through somewhere, and I was going back through some demos, and, and I actually hadn't, but I'd had it in my head for so long that, you know, as soon as I started playing, it was like, it sounded familiar to me, and uh, so, yeah, so it's a, it's a tune that I've had for a while, and kind of finally worked all the way out when I when I did the version for this uh, for this album. Well, fantastic. We are going to play Driving Force. When we come back, we've got a little bit more with the Lou DiBello Band Experience here on the Jiggy Jaguar Experience. Here is some Lou DiBello Band right now.
That's Driving Force, Lou DiBello, Lou DiBello Band, here on the Jiggy Jaguar Experience. We go back to the telephones. Lou joins us live here on the telephone. And uh, Lou, tell us a little bit about uh, some of your goals for this uh, new album and for the band and everything else. So, uh, you know, with, uh, with Heat Wave, I got... Uh, significantly more, uh, you know, kind of exposure and recognition than I had up to that point with my other uh, releases, and, uh, you know, so I'm kind of hoping to build on, on some of that, uh, uh, I think, I think in just about every way, probably, this is a, is a stronger album, so I'm, you know, I'm interested to see what, what some people think of it and what some people that, you know, had heard Heat Wave think in comparison. And, uh, you know, so looking to kind of build on some of that. Uh, locally, I'm looking to kind of expand a little bit more, uh, you know, maybe get out a bit more regionally. And I'm trying to get hooked up with, uh, uh, you know, to me, I guess it's kind of surprising. I don't know if it should be surprised, but... Uh, uh, it's kind of surprising that there are very few, if any, really legitimate booking agents uh, in this area that could book me more regionally. So, you know, I book all my stuff locally and in the, you know, general area where I play here in, in the downstate area. But uh, but I'd like to get, you know, involved with uh with some sort of uh, agent or agency where I could get a, a little bit more wider uh, variety of, of, you know, festival shows, maybe, you know, some uh, multi-band bills and things of that nature, uh, you know, and get a, you know, ex expand the audience a little bit. Um, I've got uh, got some connections on the East Coast and, uh, you know, uh, if I can get out there and, and maybe do a, a few showcase shows, we could probably arrange some some things like that at this point. Uh, you know, this album, like uh, like my others, you know, it's independently released, and, uh, you know, it's uh, unlikely that, you know, even, even if people think it's really good, you, there's just not a lot going on with record labels where, you know, a label is likely to pick it up and and do something, you know, so it's uh, it's basically all me spending the money to to do what I can. So, you know, some uh, some things I might be able to pursue if I had, you know, some other kind of uh, financial uh, backing or something. But uh, uh, keeping that in mind, you know, sometimes uh, there's only so much I can I can kind of make happen, but uh, but I would like to, to see about getting out to the East Coast and maybe getting some showcase shows in and get uh, a little bit more sort of a, maybe some national press and things like that. We've got a uh, great guest with us today. Lou DiBella joins us here in a broadcast. And um, Lou, talk to us a little bit about Flying High. We're going to play that here in a few moments. Uh, that's another one of the instrumentals on the, on the, uh, on the album. And... Uh, it's got uh, it's 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 a little bit different in a way. It's got kind of a different uh, a different little riff to it, and that's also one that I uh, had 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 kind of with an idea to record for a little while. Is sort of the main riff and and kind of some ideas for arrangements for it. But I had never I had never demoed that one at all before I started uh, putting it together for for the album. But it's got some nice. Uh, Kind of some nice like harmonic things that happen. It kind of builds up the, to the ending where it's uh, all kind of uh, you know sort of uh, uh, you know the, the chord change kind of kind of builds up and, and just kind of all comes together you know at the end. So it sort of has kind of a, a little bit of a of a logical sequence that it makes. I think. Fantastic. Well, here we go. We've got more coming back with Lou DiBella, Lou DiBella Band, right now, Flying Eye.
That's flying high. It is here on our world famous Chiggy Jaguar radio broadcast. Chiggy Jaguar experience. Lou DiBello, Lou DiBello band with us today to kick off our big broadcast day. And uh, Lou, before we let you go, my friend, uh, social media, websites, picking up the album. How do they do all these things? So, uh, you know, Lou DiBello on Facebook, uh, the Lou DiBello band on Facebook, and then just LouDiBello.com gets you to to my website. And uh, for sure on LouDiBello.com you can get, uh, uh, you know, the link there to purchase it. Uh, it's available uh, basically on, you know, anything now, Spotify, you know, iTunes, uh, you, you know, all the, all the typical outlets. Uh, I can ship CDs direct, and I can also, or they can also uh, purchase them off of uh, CD Baby. So yeah, so it's pretty easy to find. It's out there digitally and and physical copies. Fantastic. Well, we've got our next guest uh, in the batter's box. We're going to go to them, and uh, I appreciate you making time for us today. Thanks for coming on, my friend. Yes, thank you for having me, James. Appreciate it. Definitely. There he goes, Lou DeBello, Lou DeBello Band. We are going to take a break, and when we come back.